I've been trying to workshop a poll question based off the NCAA and James Madison. because That is a JMU football. Okay. James Madison is in its first year of playing, or second year of playing uh, Division 1A, or Division 1 football, FBS. And they moved up, and they're undefeated this year. And they petitioned the NCAA to allow them to be bowl eligible. Well, they were denied yesterday <laughs> by the NCAA. They're 10-0 and 0 in the Sun Belt. They're ranked number 21 in the latest top 25 poll. They host App State on Saturday, and uh, College Game Day will be there for that. But they decided that uh, Jacksonville State, Rich Rodriguez's team, trying to do the same. They want to play in a bowl game. Now, they, they could still play in a bowl game if there are not enough teams that are at 500 at their record. So there's 82 spots. There's 41 bowl games at the end of the regular season. James Madison is not eligible to play in the Sun Belt Conference championship game, despite being the only team that's still undefeated in league play. So I, I get it. You know, you want to be bowl eligible. You're two years in and you go to the NCAA. Well, the NCAA, you know, now they could have been the, hey, let's hear it for the NCAA. You know what? They, uh, they have a soft spot in their heart for, uh, you know, some of these up-and-coming schools. But, okay, that's the rule. I mean, this isn't about a football team. This is about all of your sports programs, and they give you that two-year window to be able to get up to speed with some of the other schools you're going to be playing against. And James Madison is a nice story, but I just – this here's my suggestion. How about Colorado and James Madison face each other in a bowl game? Because Colorado, they only have four wins. Maybe somebody is going to take those two and say, here's a great story. Undefeated team here, and you have uh, Colorado with uh, Dion. Maybe that could solve you know, the problems here. I don't know if Dion cares about playing in a bowl game, but you know, I, they would be one of the bigger draws. If you said – out of all the bowl team, you know teams that are eligible, and you could also have Colorado. How many bowl how many bowl games would go? Uh, we'll take Colorado because they're a draw. Now you have teams that are eligible and rightfully so, and they did all the things you're supposed to, and you uh, win your conference, you get to go to this bowl game. I, I I love that. I agree with that, but I am rooting for Colorado to be in a bowl game just because it'll be interesting. And if James Madison can get in there or Jacksonville State, great. All in favor. But the NCAA has a rule. And while we have question marks about the NCAA, you, we wonder about their authority. Uh, they laid down the law or reminded them of what the rule is, and they're not going to be eligible. Yes, Paul. Going back to James Madison, their appeal, this rule was put in place in 2008 before NIL, before the transfer portal was basically invented. And uh, James Madison, I know the rule is kind of vague. It says, we want to make sure these new FBS schools like James Madison or others or Western Kentucky years ago are up to speed in uh, compliance, scholarships, maintenance of the uh, facilities, uh, academics, all that stuff. It appears that James Madison is overperforming since joining the FBS. They've gone to an entirely FBS slash Division One schedule. They played at Virginia. That's a relatively big-time school. They're not playing – little sisters of the poor, they're not playing FBS school, uh, FCS schools anymore. And what really bothers me about this entire thing is if it's a hard rule and there's no flexibility on it, then don't have a hearing. Don't fake them out with a hearing. Don't have, let them ha make an appeals process that you're not even going to entertain. Clearly, James Madison has outperformed the average team that jumps up to FBS, mm. and they're clearly eligible for a high-end bowl. But don't bait us with a fake hearing. Because you know, a lot of schools that go up there, they don't do well. But this is a school that's outperformed. They sell out every game. They have more people in attendance than a lot of big schools do. So I think that it's a fake hearing. It's, it's a waste of everyone's time. Yes, yeah, Um, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think you should at least give them the hearing. And then, like, I think it would be worse to be like, we're not even listening to you. Yeah. I think that would be a way worse look for the NCAA. Uh, and while they're not playing, you know, Sisters of the Poor, they beat Troy... 16-14. Uh, I don't know. They beat uh, Old Dominion by three. Virginia at Virginia. 
Uh, they yeah, beat, I don't know. <laughs> they beat Georgia it State. It is awesome that they beat Virginia by one, but that's not exactly Virginia Alabama. had one big win this sure. year. I mean, it was a big win, but um, it's not an impressive resume. They're undefeated, and therefore you go, all right, okay, and then you go, undefeated. That's fair. Their strength of schedule is 99 out of one third. Now, yeah, check that. Uh, yeah, 96th strength of schedule as of right now out of 130. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. I can't. And, but that's what it should be. Mm-hmm. That's what it, you know. Th- this is like this is my problem. I think it's a little bold to be like we're ten and zero against this all these crap teams, <laughs> and then be like change the rules for us because we're ten and zero against our specifically designed week schedule. It might be a Division one schedule, but it's designed to ease them in. It's not throwing them into the fire. No, not no. Re- but not- they're playing those in the Sun Belt Conference, aren't they? They're playing a full Sun Belt schedule, and they're playing no. Division one, like this is the schedule they'll have next year. Yeah, okay. And they play at North Carolina it's not, next year. But it it's not a it's not a, a like heavy hitting schedule though. It's like, the, but they can't do anything about that. They have, have to face the teams that are in their conf- I conference. I think they should be happy to be ranked 18th with the teams that they're playing. They're right. They're ranked ahead of like Notre Dame right now. They should be happy that they are. But should they be allowed to be, even be ranked if they're not eligible for the benefits of being ranked? of playing in a major bowl. And if they had, let's say they played this season, uh, Alabama and uh, Michigan, they still would not be eligible. If they won those games, they still not be eligible according to this rule. This rule is quite antiquated. It's from like 2008. And there's a bunch of teams that have gone up from FB, FCS to FBS and that were eligible to be in uh, bowl games their first year. UTSA was eight and four. South Alabama, six and six. App State, remember the way they went up in 2014? They were seven and five. They didn't get a bowl game. Uh, Georgia Southern was nine and three their first year of FBS. It wasn't allowed in a bowl game. As many teams succeed in their first year as struggle. So what did we learn here? It's a good topic. Yeah. I, I don't know if people are going to come to the defense, the rally and cry with James Madison. I, I think people are actually. I think it's it's a hotter take to be like, uh, no, you don't deserve it. Well, you can say you deserve it because you're winning your conference, but you're not going to be in your conference championship game and you're not eligible. People want to reward somebody who goes undefeated. Uh, I get that. I just don't know. What's the the rallying cry? How does ESPN approach this this weekend? How big a deal is this for ESPN when they're there with this topic on campus with James Madison? I would imagine that'll be front and center. I what, imagine a lot of your signs are going to have to do with uh, that bull eligible. Yes, what here. does the NIL and transfer portal have to do with their story this year? Uh, when the rule was put in place for this, when you bump up, NIL and transfer portal was not really in play, especially NIL. And this would allow you, if you had the right benefactor, to improve rapidly. Like, let's say, for whatever reason, James Madison had a billionaire donor. Mm-hmm. Or how about Liberty? Liberty has billionaire mm-hmm. donors. And they went from a, a nobody to a semi-power team really quickly. Were they bowl eligible in their first two years? No. Okay. I mean, there is precedent here. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, the rule is, is very hard. I just I, I don't understand why you would have a hearing of a rule that you're not going to flex on. But I don't understand why you wouldn't want to be heard. Oh, you'd want to be heard. But you want. I'm saying, like, why have a hearing that you would never entertain the case of the person appealing? Like if the NCAA had a hearing last night and they ruled against them, what is there one that they would make an exception for? Is there any is there any possibility? Is there anything James Madison could have done? Twenty six thousand people a week, full stadium, uh, winning their games, winning their games last year. It appears that the NCAA had a faux hearing for them that was not really designed to give them a fair chance. But then they're going to have to have a hearing on Jacksonville State. Then they're going to have to have a hearing on uh, Tarleton State. So they ruled against them as well. With James Matt, that, I, you know the NCAA. I don't know how functioning they are. I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how much they care about these things. It, it feels like they're like, wait, what's going on? Yeah, we'd we'd like to play in a bowl game. Oh, well, let me see if we got a rule. Yeah, we got a rule against that. Well, can you at least hear a case? Well, let me see if I can get. Hey, hey, Tommy, wake up, Tommy. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll get a hearing together. Yeah, yeah, we'll get a hearing together. I got. I don't know if the NCAA like puts priority on any of this stuff. Just, I just don't know that you. <clears throat> I get stuck on like you just don't change all of the rules because this one team had one good year their first time out. I don't, like I don't. I don't know that you do that. 
Well, this is their second year. Yeah. Oh, okay. but okay. But they had a, a good year this year. Yeah, great uh, year undefeated. Uh, but then... And I still don't see how... But then Jacksonville State should would be eligible as well. I think they have one loss. Yeah, you can make the case. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Jacksonville State is 7-3 and three overall. 5-1 and one in the league. You know what solves all this? What? Let's guess. We've talked about it before. You're probably the first person nationally. Relegation. Like, Promotion and relegation. relegation. Let's go. Relegation. Then you win your way into the best league, you lose your Come way on. out of the best leagues. There you go. It's easy. Times. Come, Come on. on. But hey, we beat up UConn. That was a <laughs> class win. Yes, Paul. It is fun. It is. It was. It's interesting that it was ruled against two days before game day is there, which spikes up the story. It's, oh. just, it's, it's such an ironic thing that the NSA rules two days before and then game day will be there. 